go to church. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Let's go to church. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go to church. Let's praise the Lord. In the word of God, let's fellowship in the company of saints. Let's be the one, let him have his way. Let's go to church. Come on, God bless everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Sunday to you and your family. I trust we are all doing great. Welcome to another session of Sunday Reminder. And today, the word of the Lord is for the leaders, is for the shepherd, is for the pastors, is for those the Lord has put in the affairs of the church. No matter the post you are holding in the household of the Lord, even if it is a cell leader or house fellowship leaders or the HOD of your unit, this word is for us today. And I pray the Lord will help us as we listen to this word and open our heart. Make us not just the speaker and the hearer, but also the doer who are blessed when they listen to the word of the Lord. Amen. Our text today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. Then we jump to verse 11. The Bible says, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people, you have scattered my flock, driven them away and not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doings. The first thing I want to remind us as leaders in the house of the Lord is that the church does not belong to you and I. The church does not belong to any pastor, any founder, any general overseer. The church belongs to God. He bought the church with the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus redeemed us as a church. Like I always say, Jesus paid our bride price. Jesus paid our lubula. Jesus is the husband of the church. So no leader, no pastor, no general overseer can say categorically that I own this church. We are only custodians taking care of the church. And when the owner of the church will come, he will ask, like he was asking in the book of Revelation, to the angel of the church in Sardis, to the angel of the church where you are, how are my people faring? How are they doing? Are you feeding them well? The true and genuine word of the Lord. Are you guiding them well? Or you are doing whatever you feel like doing because, oh, I am in charge. No, you are not in charge. Because the owner of life can call for your life at this minute and someone else will perform your burial ceremony. And within the next few weeks, they will stand upon that altar to exalt the name of the Lord again. So as leaders in the house of the Lord, let us be careful. Verse 11 of that same Jeremiah 23 says, For both prophets and priests are profane. Yes, in my house, I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. They are reckless, doing whatever it is they want to do. Jesus calls them the hireling, those ones that were employed to take care of the sheep. But they do not love the sheep. They only come because of what they are going to eat, what they are going to gain. And when there's any problem, they leave the sheep and run away. Verse 13 says, And I have seen folly in the prophet of Samaria, they prophesied by Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophet of Jerusalem, in the prophet of our land these days. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Hey, 
the same prophets, the same leaders, the same general overseer, the same deacons and deaconess, the same elders that are supposed to uphold the integrity of God's word, that are supposed to live in holiness. God said they were living in lies and adultery. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me and are inhabitant like Gomorrah. Hmm. Hmm. This word, this word is so powerful. As leaders, what are we doing these days in church? Ordination and post has now been turned to a business. I service. You can see this person is living in sin. In fact, you know the nitty gritty of his sinful lifestyle. But because he or she brings tithes to the church, he or she supports your cause in the church, he or she is committed to you financially. Oh, God bless you, Pastor. You know, you have refused to correct them. You have refused to correct them. You are a partaker of their sinful lifestyle. God is saying, hey, this is not what I have sent you to do. This is not what he has sent us to do. How can a sinner come to the house of the Lord and remain a sinner? When the truth and the solid word of the Lord is not going out. Can we truly say to the Lord, if he comes back today, Ah, God, I fed your people, but they refused to listen. Or are you going to say, I was helping them to romance sin. <laughs> I was helping them to embrace sin. I was telling them, don't worry. God does not care what you are doing. What God cares about is your tithe and your offering. How can God collect tithe and offering from a sinner that he has not collected their life? From a sinner that has not given the most important thing to God is all her life. And we are so convenient to even put them in post. Ha! Ah, may the Lord help his church in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help his church. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Jeremiah 10, 21, we see the word of the Lord concerning the shepherds again. It says, for the shepherds have become dull-hearted and have not sought the Lord. That is the apart. The shepherds we have these days, some of us don't even know God. Some of us don't have a relationship with God. All we have is charisma. All we have is energy. All we have is talent. We do not live by the godly principles the Lord has ordained for us. And not only are we living a wayward lifestyle, we are carrying disciples and followers also in our wayward lifestyle. God is going to judge. To that angel of the church, how are you keeping your sheep? How are you feeding them? Ah, when Jesus comes, many sheep would have been malnourished if not for the mercy of God. Even the shepherd himself or herself do not know the true word of God and not feeding on the true word of God. How will the followers know the true word of God? And as followers, we need to be careful. What kind of shepherd are you submitting yourself under? Some people are stuck in a church because of religious activities. Because of the post that they have given you. Because you know the pastor cannot reprimand you. That's why you don't want to leave that church. You know there is no life in that church. You know there is no word in that church. The Bible says at a point, the word of the Lord was scarce in the land of Israel. In some churches, ah, the word of the Lord has been scarce. They say for a long time. And many spiritually minded people there, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to them. They have become like a tree. They refuse to move. 
even when the Holy Spirit is saying it's time to move. It's time to leave this place. You have overstayed your welcome. In this church, they have refused to move. They have become like a rock. They have become like a tree. Who are you submitting your destiny under? Who is your shepherd? For you to know if this is truly a shepherd or an hireling, as Jesus told his disciples in the book of John chapter 10, verse 11 to 15. Check very well. Be careful. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In that Jeremiah chapter 23, from verse 16, we see the effect and the impact of this kind of prophet, false prophet, upon the church. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophet who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictate of his own act, they say, no evil shall come upon you, but you've forgotten. The Bible says, say ye to the wicked, it shall not be well with them. But we make the sinner comfortable, comfortable in their sin. This place says, we make them worthless. The prophet and the priest that are supposed to uphold the integrity of the word of the Lord are diminishing the grace of God. They are diminishing the faith. They are diminishing the stand of, of those God has ordained under them. They make them worthless instead of increasing them. And their vision glorifies the flesh. We can see in that verse 16 and 17. You say to those that are living in sin, ah, there is no problem. You can continue living in sin. You even pray that their illegal business should prosper. Ah, If you are that kind of person, this word of God is coming to you. The angel of that church. What are you doing? I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. Their preaching, their prophecy is for their own gain. It is not for the kingdom or for any heavenly agenda. Whatever they do is to line their pocket. Is to make them feel good. Is to build their ego and their pride. God is saying today, turn away from such actions. They encourage ungodliness and sinful lifestyles. You know, we have said it, verse 17. And to everyone who walks according to the dictate of his own acts, they say, no evil shall come upon you. Ah, they, they are not preaching the word of the Lord. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. No, it's not part of their preaching. Their own preaching is that God will bless you even when you are living in sin, even when your hand is filled with blood. Even when you are abusing your spouse, God will bless you. No, God will not bless such a person. And because you are aiding them in their sinful lifestyle, the judgment of the Lord is coming against such pastors, such leaders, I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. They don't preach repentance to sinners. They do not preach forgiveness and restitution to backsliders. We can see that in Jeremiah 23, verse 21 and 22. The Bible says, I have not sent this prophet, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They are not hearing from God. They are hearing from their own mind. They are hearing from other men. They are hearing from anything that is trending. That is where they find their own sermon. They don't hear from God. God did not send them. Verse 22 says, But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. But they do not do that. Instead, they are building their ego. They are allowing people to continue to be comfortable in sin. God is saying today, 
who are these shepherds? I did not send them. Some people actually started with God. But along the way, they deviated. They have followed the path of sin. They have followed the path of vainglory in order to gain worldly wealth. They have diverted to the broad way that contains everything. And because they are living in sin, they are not bold enough to correct sin in the life of their followers. They are not bold enough to preach against sin because they know that word will first of all attack them. That word will be for them. And they don't want to live that kind of life. They don't want to live their sinful life. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Their focus is accumulation of wealth at all costs. At all costs. Some people have even gone to the ocean. Some have gone to San Gomas. Some have gone to add so many things to the word of the Lord. Just to make it spicy. To make it enticing to the ears of the world. They have diluted the word of the Lord. No, don't worry. Cohabiting is not bad as long as it's just with one person. Oh, don't worry. Two wives is not bad as long as you marry them and you treat them right. Scamming others is not bad as long as you pay your tithe. Who says that? That is not the word of the Lord. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible says God is not happy with ungodly skills. When you are turning it one way or the other, you are scamming people, even in your business. God is not happy with that. And if you bring such tithe and offering to the house of the Lord, it is not acceptable or recorded in heaven. It is an offering and tithe in futility. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. They prophesy lies, lies, lies that makes people comfortable in disobedience and sin. Jeremiah 23 verse 32 says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all. Ha! Prophecies. Prophesy, pastor. Visions. And these visions are not from God. These visions are to promote lies. You are prophesying to a woman that her husband is a married man. Hey. You are prophesying and you know such prophecy is ungodly. And that is why as followers, know your God, know the word of the Lord. Those that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. And those that do not know their God shall be weak and exploited. Exploited spiritually, physically, in every aspect. That is why as a follower, you cannot be gullible. They tell you, start eating grass. You are eating grass. They tell you, ah, this is the way it is supposed to happen. Don't worry about the Bible. Just follow what I'm saying. Whoever it is that is asking you to follow any instruction that is contrary to the word of the Lord, run, run. Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So if their word is not Christ-like, if their action is not godly, they are not of God. They just behave like us. They speak like us, but they are not of God. I pray the Lord we open our eyes in Jesus' name. You also know them because they preach philosophies of men. Hey, this is what this person said. This is what this person said. Yes, we've heard them. We can use them as citations, as examples. What has the word of the Lord said? This is the standard. It doesn't matter the level of the person. It doesn't matter their spiritual charisma. If what they are saying is not found in the word of the Lord, it is an error. These same priests and pastors and prophets have become more of motivational speakers. It is good to motivate others, yes. But when you now begin to weave it with lies, and deceptions just to make people subjected to your own whims 
That is witchcraft in the church. Let us be careful. The God of the church is watching. The husband of the church is coming. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. They really preached the principles of the kingdom again. Just saying what this one said, what this one said. Ah, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. They live sinful lifestyles. The Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. From a grape you cannot get orange. You say you have a man of God over your life. And their lifestyle is questionable. Their daily living is questionable. They do not produce the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, goodness, kindness, long-suffering. But they have anger, uncontrollable anger. They have unforgiveness. They have all manners of unfruitful works in their life. But because they can speak in tongues, hey, they have the tongues of angels and of men. You are referencing them. They are dragging you to error gradually. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So if you see a man of God over you, living a life of sin, and they justify it, ah, they justify it. They have a passage of the Bible that supports that sinful lifestyle. Some of them, sin does not even affect them again. They are above the effect of sin. Even when they sin, Jesus Christ has died for them. There is nothing like that. Saved ones and saved for all. There is nothing like that. I pray the Lord we open our eyes and help us to go to places where truth are being preached. Because so many of us, the Holy Spirit has directed us. We have that hunger, that yearning in our hearts to make us know we are in the wrong place. But because of carcass, because of religion, because of it's the place we were born and bred and baptized. You are staying there. You are gradually killing your spiritual life. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. They exhibit the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And they glory in it. God is not happy with such. There is a judgment for every man every woman that the Lord has placed in one position or the other in the church and that are misusing this position. We see it in Jeremiah 23, verse 15. The Bible says, Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with warm wood and make them drink the water of God. For the prophet of Jerusalem... Profaneness has gone out into all the land. Verse 2 of says, Therefore their way shall be to them like slippery ways. In the darkness they shall be driven on and fall in them. For I will bring disaster on them, the year of their punishment. That's in Jeremiah chapter 23. 30 to 32 says, Therefore behold, I am against the prophet, says the Lord. Who steal my word? Everyone from his neighbor. We are not asking the Lord, God, what do you have for your people again? We just listen to any word and pick it. It is good to listen to other ministers of God. And from their preaching, from their sermon, we can get inspiration. We can get revelation. But that should not be all we depend on as leaders in the church. We should have personal relationship with God. We should have a daily interaction with God on what he wants us to do for the sheep he has placed under us. Behold, I am against the prophet, that is verse 31, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I did not send them or command them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all. Verse 34 says, And as for the prophet and the priest and the people who say the oracle of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. <laughs> I pray the Lord will help us. That is why you should be careful of where you are. Because even as you have ailing that man of God, God said, I will punish you and your household too. Because you should know what exactly you are doing. And for some of us, 
that are in these churches and we are being manipulated by demonic powers. I decree that the Lord will deliver us by his mercy today in Jesus name. Your heart is opened. Your eyes is opened to see the way and leave every evil gathering that you have been bound in the name of Jesus. I tell you, some men of God are holding people down because they see, ah, this one gives me money. This one brings a lot of tithe to the church, brings a lot of offering to the church. So they ensure they enslave them in that church so that they don't leave. But I declare today by the word of the Lord, by the power in the blood of Jesus, for everyone that is confined and imprisoned in any congregation that is not of the Lord, receive your deliverance today in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jeremiah 10 verse 21b, the other judgment for those pastors, for those ministers, for those leaders that are doing their own thing is there. It says, therefore they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. The owner of the sheep is coming. The owner of the church is here. And if we are not careful, we are maltreating the bride of Christ. He's going to scatter the church and bring another shepherd that will teach them, that will love them and lead them in the way of their husband. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. As leaders, let us check ourselves. What is our motive for working for God? How are we doing this work of God? Are we doing it the way the Lord has sent us? Or we are doing it with our own flesh, with our own wisdom, with our own power? How do we speak and relate to those the Lord has placed under us? We just shout at them. We manipulate them. We are friendly to those that gives us gifts. And we treat those that don't have anything shabbily. Is that who the Lord has called us to be? Many of us have been tossed to and fro because we are not seeking the face of the Lord. We have made some people profit over us. They are the ones that say, this is the dream I had. And you just follow God, Libu. Even devil gives dream to people. We need to do more. We need to increase as the body of Christ, as leaders in the house of the Lord. We cannot allow the devil to take over the church because we, the angels he has put in charge, are sleeping or slumbering. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In conclusion, I'm going to read that Jeremiah 23, verse 28. It says, The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a armor that breaks the rocks in pieces? When you have the word the Lord has given you for his people, say it. Like the Holy Spirit spoke to me severally when he gives me instruction to tell somebody, to give a message to someone, and then I'm trying to, to reason the message and say, ah, this message does not sound like it belongs to this person. The Holy Spirit told me, you are a Korea Bolaji. You are a DHL. Why should the message I'm sending through you make sense to you? It doesn't need to make sense to you. It needs to make sense to those I am sending it to. Just imagine when God sent the prophet to King David to tell him about the sin he thought he committed in secret. That I've seen it. You took Bathsheba and killed the husband. I saw it and I'm going to punish you. If the prophet had been trying to reason it, ah, but King David, you even called him a man after your heart. How can you say he did this? He wouldn't have helped David to go back to God. But when God gave him the message, he went to give the message with God's wisdom to the king. And he rescued the life of the king from sin. So today, the word of God you want to preach, is it the word God has sent you or the one you sent yourself? Or is it from hearsay from the church? Oh, this one said this, this one said this. Somebody came to you for counseling. They become the topic of the sermon. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name so that we can keep our hearts above pollution. 
We should be able to keep our heart above pollution. That is why you should guard your gates, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your mind. Ha! As much as possible, people will come. What they are saying, are they saying the truth? Are they gossiping? What is the motive of that prayer session or intercessory prayer they want you to pray? So that people will know the secret of others or truly because of the genuine love they have for Christ and his body. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So who are you? An hireling or a shepherd? Are you truly in charge of the church the Lord has put under you? Or are you scattering the sheep? By your laziness, by your carelessness, or even by your greed, unforgiving attitude, living a life of sin and carrying people also to follow. The Bible says the blind leading the blind. They will both fall into the ditch. Today I want us to ask the Lord to have mercy upon us. Oh, Father, show us mercy. In any way we have gone astray, show us mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, show us mercy. In any way we have led your people astray, show us mercy. Show us mercy, O oh Lord. Father, let your mercy speak for us in the name of Jesus. We pray for our pastors. We pray for our leaders, Father. In any way they have missed it. In any ways they have erred. Oh, Father, show them mercy. Show them mercy. Help them to turn back to you. Help them to turn back to you. Help them, Lord, to come back to your will in the name of Jesus. Help them, Father, to do what you have asked them to do. Give them the wisdom. Give them the courage and the boldness to be able to speak your word without any fear or anything holding them back in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, help us, Lord, as followers, as members, to be able to set your word for ourselves, to know your standard, and not fall prey to hirelings and fake pastors and prophets in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, help your church, Lord, that the gate of hell shall not prevail against your church in the name of Jesus. Our actions, our words, our thoughts, Lord, oh, we not walk in alignment with the kingdom of darkness to pull down your church in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to stand firm in you. Thank you, Lord, for you've done it, for in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. This message is not in any way to judge anyone, but this message is a call for us as ministers of God to go back to God, to go back to his ways, and to make sure that we are leading the people he has placed under us are right. And for us as members to make sure that our pastors are not indirectly leading us astray or intentionally leading us astray. We can pray for them. We can correct them in love. We can show them through Bible study what the word of the Lord has said. And I pray the Lord will help us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure you've been blessed by this. Please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe to this channel so that others can also benefit from these godly and edifying messages. God bless you in Jesus' name. Shalom. And today is Sunday. Go to church. Today is Sunday. Did you go to church? Eh? Today is Sunday. Let us go to church. Today is Sunday. See you in church. Bye.